blessings and welcome to all to reasonings right here at the Chill Life. I'm your host Taluku, the Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host High Priest, Tafara. Perfect love, perfect, perfect love, brothers and sisters. Uh, so, for the High Priest, we kind of, you know, started a particular flow of um, cultural topics surrounding a lot of Rastafari synonymous information uh, you know it came as one of your um, you know your desire always to minister to Rastafari so uh, you initiated this series and currently we're at another one of the offerings that you want to talk about and this one is um, around you know the fact that you know Bob Marley uh, was baptized by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church uh, before he died and so she might say why is this important well in a lot of sense like we're talking about on the um, the one about the Abuna Isaac and I saw some people you know, in some comments uh, I mean I got some good responses and also not that we want to look forward to good response because literally everything is supposed to be information you're supposed to search through to see a person's point but that person was making a lot of accus like a accusation, you know. Um, it was general, but it could have been asking specific to us and um, or we were relating on certain issues. Well, number one, I ain't a history book and I ain't in follow so I didn't go there. Right? Sometimes the mouth slip and information get twisted and whatever. But the, the issue is that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, you know, is, is Christian. Or we say they follow the Amashiach, they follow Aesus Christ, they follow what we term Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? And Bob Marley, the icon of Rastafari, right? right? Being what we call a, 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 a Joseph, right? I mean, I mean, I shouldn't know this, I mean, this a lot about like the, the whole cosmology of Rastafari. So Naphtali would be January, right? And we'll say how Joseph was February. So Bob Marley being a Joseph means in, in, in ascribed to the Rastafari pantheon, maybe especially through Martin Mopano, right? And through maybe like the 12 tribe view each month representing a tribe, having a specific color, right? And I call him a Joseph, and like symbolic to Old Testament, Joseph in the Bible, the one that was, you know, sold into um, slavery and end up being uh, like a prime minister. Anyway, so Bob Marley, a minister of Rastafari, a minister of Haile Selassie as God, now converts or is baptized into the Ethiopian Orthodox Church follower of Yeshua before he died. Now, some Rasta, but well, I may not speak because of Rasta, but let me just talk to myself on what I glean from what I've heard and some of the information I've read and watched. It's just kind of strange to a portion of the community when that is brought up high peace. Because it's like you're saying, your icon, the one in which you are inspired to a lifestyle, a way of life, has converted upon death to another belief system. It would seem that like the person was weak and someone took advantage. But is it that when a person is close to death, you test the spirits of things. I bet you is that. No matter what it costs me. But I've been really friends. But I bet you, hallelujah is that. You ever get close to death yet? Well I am. Twice. Right? Hey. And I can tell you. I was ready to die both times. I wasn't like say hallelujah. I was like, oh please save me. I was just saying, God, let it not be painful. So we can't leave that painful then. And you know, some people say, oh, you know, make it painful, whatever. But anyway, um and when I was close to death. I was just thinking about basically all the things that I was doing wrong, Halilan. I mean, I thought about the things, I'm speaking of the things I, I was conscious about that I was doing wrong. I was thinking about those things and trying to just clear that air and just trying to make my transition into the next world lighter as best as I can. So I'm saying it make you come closer to your, your God and Creator. And so therefore, I'm just making a hypothesis, and I did say I'm making a hypothesis, you can fill in the spot. Let's just say uh, you believe in a, you know, Hail Selassie. <coughs> sure. So 
somebody I'll follow in ten in spirit man. Let's see I believe how you right the body somebody. I'll find the body. Let's see you follow Iris last time. You look on your dead bed. You start call to Selassie. Strong. Cause you are dead. You're close to death. And the spirit knows a vibratory response. Every spirit knows a vibratory response. You call upon Selassie, you're not getting a vibratory response. Maybe even I feel less and less, and maybe even I feel a more sinking feeling, a dark and emptiness. Unless it's for curiosity, you're dead and you're say, Jesus! And you feel something, hallelujah, shaking in your body. Remember the name of the people who don't like Rasta? Bone the name there. <laughs> and you go call out that name, you feel your body start hyperventilating and shake. Mm. Now you're sick state. It don't make you believe, huh? call upon the priest and say, Make him come pray, hallelujah, for me. Because you have a, a testimony in your reality. I said, hypothetical. Don't say no. Energy move. If you send the Lord, take your right, hallelujah. Just make an hypothetical. So, I'm thinking when, I'm, when a person is close to death, you're questioning where you believe, you know. And don't tell me that there's few people who have changed belief system upon the deathbed, hallelujah. Because I know it's not true. Many people have come to the faith upon the approach of death because those things that they thought held power don't hold no power so we're talking about you know Bob Marley and they even have reference to uh, when, you're, when you're baptized in the Orthodox Church they give you a, a baptismal name and they actually I said it's baptismal name I don't know it because I just watch the documentary I don't want to be inflammatory and talk so when I go stop in terms of the, the name itself but Everybody gets a baptism and I think he got one. If anybody knows, they can put it in the comment. Hi, Priest of Farah. How do you view um, Bob Marley's deathbed conversion to being a follower of Yeshua Mashiach? Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Yes, Brother Gretel. You find this out shortly after finding Christ. I find out, say, oh, Bob Marley did find Christ too. Because certain things is just never visible if you don't know Christ. Mm -hmm. It's just it's not significant. It's like you just brush over it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's there right in front of you, you're not going to see it. But when we find Christ now, I see things where I say, hold on, man, what? Bob Marley find Christ before him dead. Enough people don't know that, you know. And if you do your research, you will find out say, that go on for two. Bob Marley denounced Selassie and put up Christ. You see me? Christ him take on. Because I say, he need salvation. When they are dead, you know, you realize the whole on now, and as you say, the Silas when I call up and never do nothing for me yet. No miracle. Me never see personally a miracle being performed in the name of Silas. Never. Not what me not even hear a testimony of it. Me never see a miracle performed in the name of Silas. But me see hundreds. In the name of Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, see him name one of people born out. I see him name, me say, born out enough devil. <laughs> you see me? I mean, I see no other name that do the same result. So, that's all. Christ is the only name under heaven by which men shall be saved. Because I saw some other singer too, you know, there's this lady singer mm -hmm. that realized that a true man, a Christ, are the only name under heaven by which men shall be saved. You're talking about one of the high trees? Yeah, man. Judy yeah. Yeah, man. And she said, all right, a Christ. Because when a truth, Rasta people are look for, you know. Who want the truth? We're tired of the lies. Babylon lies, Rome lies, you see me? Who want the truth now, man? And we are trying to find truth through African Selassie. But at the same Selassie, point me back to Christ. And Selassie helped, find, um, helped point me to Christ, you know? Selassie himself. 
with them writings and testimonies. But I say, no man, something with Christ is different, man. I can look into Christ some more, in the Bible some more. Because Bob Marley, if you hear that music, he's a spiritual man. You know? And the man loves God. You know? But that was little, little delusional ideas, you see me? From other elders. You follow teachings from some elders and you think so they know the truth. But when you observe them, them lifestyle, because by the fruits you shall know them. You see, see, have be a corrupted fruit, them depend. No fruitful tree in other midst. Yes, I. You know, because I guess the journey is really long. Some things happen later on in the journey where you don't match what was happening in the early part of the journey. So some people might just take it as, you know, a late entry and want to disqualify it, you know. So I guess some might do it as just something that has no real merit, you know, because the body of his work is, is Rastafari. And then in, in, in his weakest moment, his head was shaved, and then he said, Christ. So we understand a lot of people looking at it as well. That's why I laid out the analogy as I, as, I, as I laid it out. And, you know, not just Judy Mott as a famous Rasta woman, that's also a calling Davis as well too, as a cultural woman and, and you know, lived in that circle for a very long time. She also came to Christ. Not using people just as a general example, but to say that late in one's life, mm -hmm. no one has experienced more. Like I said, the ideology of the elders that you, you love and you believe in, because they first gave you the knowledge of Africa, the knowledge of what was the foundation of your self-awareness, you know, or your template you're using for self-identity. Right? The, the, the information that you've got from like the environment and the, the, the Rasta, you know, elders and teachers and matriarchs, they, they gave you a certain view of the Bible and a certain way to interpret information. So you, you conflate um, your desire to have a, a political and a sovereign expression, you know, in terms of personage, right? Versus understanding your spiritual freedom which is in the divine Christ and through your acknowledging of Christ you return to spiritual freedom which breaks the bonds of human subjugation because he who is freed is free indeed so when your freedom is based in truth it changes a lot of the, the desire to please others so therefore in a moment where it's coming to a head everything is leaving you the truth become more important than an image of the truth or a belief associated with the truth. The truth becomes primal. Simply, when you reach certain points in life, you want to know God. And you no longer just want to know God as how others are presented God to you. You get a sense of self. So others are presented information, you comb the information, and you ask questions, and there you know you see contradictions pop up. You begin to confound them, kind of the spirit is searching the information. We call that discernment. So when you close to certain points of life, that discernment gets stronger because you, you're realizing that there's a I said there's an unfathomable end coming. And it scares you. And so the power of discernment comes up, okay, you have to test the spirit them now. You start to test many of the spirits, right? And prove them not to be what you were taught they are. Right? So there's another point that the Lord wanted me to um, mention, I just remembered it. Bob Marley had said in one of his interviews that um, because you know a lot of people attach him and his message to a kind of as I said, black cultural movement mm -hmm. of reclamation of black identity. Uh, certainly some would even go as far as to say the natural man's identity. However, <clears throat> it is codified and obscured by the spiritual view or the, the view where, 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 the, where the kingdom develop around that. So them just say, you know, it's like maybe I'm the king of reggae and then I represent Selassie as like a disciple then, you know, like an apostle. And so, yeah, speak the word of your majesty 
to the world, so he become like an apostle. Mm -hmm. So that's how some of them look for him like we like in my messenger, they just put it on it so they don't like that word. So in one of his interviews, oh sorry, there's a glass to finish the point. Yeah, sometimes they didn't know I rush. But others look on him like just a man that speak about black liberation because Rasta connected to the black power movement. So a lot of it is nationalistic linked to the struggles of black people as a motor would have said are going in Jamaica and it become integral in him understanding to express the pain they are black people. And so the people that might either link it to the to the Bible and give him certain views and come up with certain strong you know, kind of very strong songs about you know black suppression and slavery, challenging the white press up. There's a whole heap substantiation to this, right? In, in, a, in a Africa unite. So let me not even go there. You know, some people are like my question, what is he talking about? Of course I know what I'm talking about. So there's a black portion of the ideology, but Bob Marley clearly said, I'm not on the black man's side, I'm not on the white man's side, however, I'm on God's side. And this was said when he was in a healthy, strong state of mind. Now people might question me and challenge me as to who is God to him? Who is different from what? Obviously, but why it's relevant? When you perceive God as a who, there are certain things that you perceive about that being. But before God is a who, meaning identified, there's a question, what? What is God? What is the source of existence? Now when you come to what is God, right, you get a, a deeper understanding of a question, like I'm not on a statement side, so I'm not on the white man's side, but I'm on the black man's side, or the black man's side, but I'm on God's side. I show you that within white and black there's ideology. Ideology is about life, ideology is about God and, and creation and things where make people follow a certain path but in saying categorically I'm on the side of God which is more than a who but what is God the divine creator of heaven and the earth the ultimate state that supersedes man woman black white rich poor dreadlocks balling God is that state, he is clearly defined, that supersedes ideology. Now to me, I'm psychological, that to me, hallelujah, is a premise. Because you got to examine things in retrospect. What is the premise? The premise is that Bob Marley had a belief, hallelujah, intrinsically in God. And somebody convinced Bob Marley said, God is I, this last year. And when Bob Marley was about to transition, Bob Marley realized that God was in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, of Nazareth, and not in I, this last year simple. So why, why did I say it that way? To shed light upon the belief that, and you know I'm telling my word for it, I'm reminding people, to shed light upon the belief that he merely came to a decision of converting because he was weak and dying. Him locks cut off, hence he has no communication or connection, meaning he lose the essence of himself. So some people that say, that evidence is not admissible. But I'm saying, in premise, by statements he's made before, in clear defiance and ideology governing, is an intrinsic belief in God. Okay. Right? And the Lord is just saying, Jerome, you lady talk about, they talk about again, can you just give me a look at this one? He could have said, I'm not upon a white man's side, I'm not upon a black man's side. Yeah. I noticed when I was saying that, they were trying to confuse me, but that's how the enemy got. Yeah. The Lord is saying to tell them this. But Marley said clearly, and I said it already, I said it again, and at this point, in addition, additionally, I am not on the black man's side, or on the white man's side, I'm on God's side. Lord is saying to say it clearly, he could have said, and I quote, me not upon the black man's side, me not upon the white man's side, me not upon the lost side. Did you hear me? He could have said, I'm not on the white man's side, I'm not on the black man's side. But I'm on Selassie's side. He could have said that. That's why I said, when you're describing core ontological belief, the empirical, when you say God, you couldn't look at God as a who, as first. I mean, who is God? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as someone said, Selassie, Buddha, Krishna. The who couldn't be the first question. What is God? What is God? It's a question that holds the premise of what is existence? What am I doing here? What is creation? Who created me? Right? 
why am I created? That's in a deeper context of not knowing God to be a being. So you can say, who? And that's why now when you recognize Jesus Christ, you say, in whom I have my faith? Because now you know, hallelujah, in whom you have your faith. Well, what I'm saying is that you wouldn't start out with that statement and you say, I believe in God, to know God to be a who? To know God to be Buddha, Krishna, Jesus. You would not start out as a statement of declaring God to be a manifest metamorphic creature. That's not the first premise. God is unknown to you. And hence, it is a greater understanding that in us, what is God? What am I doing here? It's a question. Why am I created? Those questions are in the same sphere. And it goes to the unknown. You talk about the source of existence before you know the source to be manifest in Jesus Christ. So in Bob Marley clearly said, in the upon God's side, by the true and living God in my talk, though we never know him at that time, hallelujah, to be Jesus Christ. Or you have up here in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You never know him to be that. Because if it wasn't so, and he can and he had consolidated in his thinking, God, the what is God with who is God? If the conflict the two as one, then he would have said, when the pan of black man said, the white man said, when the pan of black man said, he would have said that. That other shows us what I say, I'm God. Hallelujah. I preach the power. Yes, brother, I agree at all. Yeah, man, and in my journey to, I go to enough philosophies far from Bible and Christ. You know, I burn out Bible and burn out Christ. But I never dream, sir. Me would have said Christ. <laughs> and I read Bible and I talk about Bible. That does for show you how the truth is powerful. Mm -hmm. The truth will change a man's life, you know. Because too much evidence they come before me. For me to deny it. For, for me to deny God. Too much. I may give thanks for the experience because enough man still not find God yet. You know, hold up delusions and see the Bob Marley find God in the last part, so we'll give thanks for that. At least him soul have a chance. Can I repent? You see me? For all them wrongs. And he accept Christ as him Lord and Savior. You know, so he get a chance for eternity. Because when we touch up eternity, who that? Probably Bob Marley, man. <laughs> but I'm secure that entrance every day. Yes, I? Yes. Yeah, man. I feel man God business still, you know. Hallelujah. But I'm secure that entrance. We'll never talk like we know. Yeah. At least him try. Yes. Him, him make a move. Yeah. Other than him never do nothing. Hallelujah. He could have chosen to do, do, do nothing. True. Yeah. Wise. Yeah. But him say, you know, since things look bad, make I make a step towards eternity. Why am I to lose? <laughs> that, you know? mm -hmm. Why am I to lose? Hey. Nothing. But why am I to gain? Eternity. Exactly. Eternal life. So I'm taking faith and make a move because he knows there's something wrong. How silly I never save him from this calamity. You know? Why go on to Babylon? Look how much time he called for Silasi and nothing. See him call upon Christ in the last part now, so he can get him eternity. You see me? Christ answer him. Because still I say, I answer him too, and I say, Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, Christ yeah. there. No look to me, he look to Christ. Because Christ him look to. Christ is the source of all of this, all of creation. A Christ make it. A Christ make Silasi. A Christ make Bob Marley. So they must worship Creator, Hallelujah. Father, Eternal Father, Everlasting Father, the Great I Am. The Creator, for never for the Creator, you know, who do exist. And I enjoy this beautiful creation, man. So I just desolate there for all of the people who are look 
for the truth. It might sound weird to you at first and say, why them Rasta money are talking about Christ and Bob Marley this and you know? I say things what might upset them. But maybe you need to look upsetting to stir you up, man, because you're too comfortable in the lies and the delusion. You need a little stir up. Go do some research, man. Go seek some more. No fee so you know everything. It's a foolish man I go say that. A foolish man say him know everything. Absolutely. If you hear some man I say something, do your research, man. Not just push them away like that. Do some research. Dig deeper into the thing, man. Because a veil over your eyes. Mm -hmm. And you need to realize, say, hold on, no man, we need to take it off. And see what I'm going for real. Yes, I. And as we, you know, we acknowledge that, you know, this journey for us, Aboriginal, as some people say, so called black people, suggesting so that we're dead and property, we kind of lost. The words that were scattered to the four corners. That means that we don't have a real grounding in our fullness. That means spiritually, physiologically, and economically, right? And the spiritual part is very important. Because that means that we pick up customs and behavior and belief of others who we look at as having a higher status than us because it's taught to us that way. So it's like when I'm going to get to wisdom, no? Bible is not necessarily the first place he might look toward in relation to himself. Because remember, say, wisdom is in a Hindu text, you know, Buddhist text, you know, transcendentalist text, in the Sai Baba text, and as in the Bhagavan text, you understand me? It's there in all the Sufi master, the Shakun, you understand me? So you're thinking, let me go through this. That it looks kind of mystical. They look kind of the floating pan cloud. It's not a smoke cloud, but something a air of appearance. And so you're drawn through that because something seems familiar. What is familiar of it? Because there is something familiar. Is that the people who deceive us through ideology deceive us by using a similitude of truth with the lies. <laughs> so then. The imagery, a lot of what we gain through the knowledge of Rasta, is imagery of ancient self. Self, I would say, at different stage of sovereignty. And notice I didn't say religion yet, because I'm going to relate it back to religious view. At different state of sovereignty. Now, people look at these sovereigns in our modern perception and isolate religiosity and isolate practices and functions and ascribe to it a religious label according to how our mind operates now. So, let me go back again. It's like me and you right now. We have what they call Jamaican. We are dealing with Christ, right? Our information goes out into the world. We are talking about Christ. But after our time has passed, right? Others who, yes, Father, who never watch one of our video yet, but talk to people who watched our videos come maybe this network down and no more internet and no more of this and them said there was two youth named Sila Media or Tree of Life this Rasta and you know all they are like you know you give let's let's use this these two titles but don't get us wrong I will not compare ourselves to them all these men are like a Timothy and a Jeremiah right and it's like a Timothy and a Jeremiah and you put this religious spin on everything we are doing and it becomes ideological and you forget that we're talking not just about our culture, where we live and how we appropriate, we have life. Our core principle is to talk about the Yahshua Mashiach. That's what we're doing, is we're talking about the Mashiach. But people will abstract the dress, boy. Raman was the one that dressed a certain way. You know, the other one called himself Great Hole. You know, he had a kind of like a contemporary way of dressing, but the one that was the high priest, he had a more classical kind of dressing, and the way his beard was, you know, and you want to emulate that character, and you talk and you talk. It's like, I see it also in the Bible too, so I can show you what I mean. It's like, the book is a book of testament, and it's supposed to reveal 
the, the personage of who God is on earth. His presence on earth, and we we'll call that the New Testament, but that he fulfilled all of the Old Testament. That's Yahshua Mashiach called Jesus Christ. So I ask you this question now to substantiate all that what I've said so you can stay with me. Where is the where is the book of Jesus Christ in the Bible? Where is the book that when the pastor quoted, I quoted, you quoted, we say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth said, Suffer not the little children to come unto me. In the book of Jesus, chapter 7, verse 8. The first book of Jesus, the second book of Jesus, the third book of Jesus, the fourth book of Jesus, the first book of Yeshua Mashiach, the second book of Yeshua Mashiach, the third book of Yeshua Mashiach, the fourth book of Yeshua Mashiach, the fifth book, the sixth book, the seventh book of Yeshua Mashiach. Where are the books of Yeshua and Mashiach? Why is the God manifest in the book that declares the testament that he fulfills has no book that bears his name there's a book of Moses there's all oh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John never one day was there ever a pastor, a prophet or any one of God but their name is in a book you abstract the actual experience of the Hebrews of the Berbers of the Moabites and you put a religious spin on it what do you say Moorish Aboriginal Moorish Science Temple of America Rastafari Bedwarism Mayalism Revivalism you put a spin on it ideological but here was culture existence and life that had a direct meaning in the time it's happening and throughout all time that is clear but ideologies cover it Jesus Christ of Nazareth Yeshua Mashiach is a fulfillment of the prophecies of the book of prophecies we call the Bible where is the book that bears his name they said Yeshua Jesus a great teacher back in the old Bibles there are a few pages in Revelation in certain places that was colored red and they said these were the quotations of Yeshua. These were the quotations of Jesus. Does that still appear in the Bible today? You can tell me. And then you can further answer the question. Ask the canon this. Where is the book of Yeshua Mashiach? Where is the book of Jesus Christ? So we have ideologies now covering over things. And I still remember my point. My point is when we've been misled by teachers that took us away from truth. In this modern context when you say you're trying to reclaim self-identity and you posit these religious ideologies, you posit these non-truths that are philosophical beliefs into actual historic occurrence that have already been codified in our history and we are living it. So when you go by your tribe, King Jed and Tom, we were always the ancient Hebrews though we weren't always called that that's a point in time when we were called that we are the traditions, the customs, the beliefs of the Bible and that is why I never claim when I intro this video or the previous video I should say that Rasta's foundational belief was pure African or came from African I said Old Testament it's a historical point of view the Old Testament was the history of the ancient world. It's actual account and recorded narrative. That's what's there. And modern people put a spin on it. An ideology on it. But right there, I told you what happened, how it happened, and why it happened. When you're searching creation, it says, what is this? What is God? What is God? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. In the beginning, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word taken to itself flesh and dwelt amongst men. Does that explain to you ideologically, but actually, in a language correctly? The Word is God, the Word was with God, the Word taken to itself flesh. God being vibration, spirit, energy, being that which words are formulated from 
that which time, space, depth, width, height, and brevity comes from. What is God? Source. Ever existing. Never was not existing. Forever existing. Was, is, is to come. Always. Always existing. What is God? Who is God? That is what God is. So now who? We will call metamorphic perception. Who is God? I will get metaphors from it. Who is God? Metamorphosis, transformation. Who is God? As man, well, he's the one that was, is, and is to come. Who is he that was said, that was, and is said to be, that isn't anymore, was said to come? That's what we're talking about, right? That God was, and then he came, and he is, and then he wasn't anymore amongst us, and then he's to come again. We know this has the faith of Yahshua Mashiach. That he came to save us, brought knowledge and truth to bring us back into the spiritual fold of the living kingdom of God. And then he left to say, I'm God to prepare a place that where I am, I, I am and you shall be us. So no, he set in motion the preparation to get us prepared for paradise, for return to paradise as the children of Adam and Eve. And then he went to paradise to prepare paradise for us to be an advocate in the court house with the 24 20 and 4 elders right to make what the Lord tell us to make supplication on our behalf uh, what is that word called um, prayers uh, anyway is there to be our representative to make propitiation propitiation for our sin he is who covers our sin but according to the contract, you have to declare him sovereign, divine, was is and is to be for the contract to be sublimated. Right? And so now he prays, he exalts, he lifts you up because you have put your entire faith and trust in him. And that's when you know God now. I know the faith of God, and then you can profess it. Hallelujah. It's not a word. Here you profess who is God. Yes, I preach the So the word I was looking for is that the Lord makes intercession on our behalf. And that's why when the Holy Spirit prays in us, it's not just always audible or explicable to your, to your senses in groanings and stirrings, because there are deeper vibrations of which we are unaware of and these are the things now because in the manifest nature of Christ is the Holy Spirit which is the gift he left with us so now there's this warmth in our heart and as the presence of God you now you know who is God and so those of us who say this are those who have professed the faith and so it's different from a person who don't know a person who don't know could approach from this angle when we didn't know we couldn't speak to us mm -hmm. and so what we're trying to say is that there's no sin in awakening to the truth or converting to the truth or becoming aware of salvation because this is what salvation is about leaving this width and plain open which is really the straight and narrow I'm going to cut out the width which is really the straight and narrow open which is through morality, ethics following the laws of God and the commandments a clean real life that way we cannot enter in the presence and not be ideological but know God in actuality now right? And when the actuality comes up, in other kind of words, test the spirit and prove it. When you have got you a tough time and you are called upon certain name and certain names not helping you and you've been doing it for years and you've been suffering more and more. And when you feel you're at your worst and you're beaten the most, you make a mistake and you think. And you're more asleep or you think. And you call Jesus and your old body reverberate differently. Hallelujah. And then you know, say so you were wrong. Alright, please, I'll see this one. Yes, but a great all, yeah, man. Jesus, Jesus Christus, is the way, the truth, and the life. No man goeth unto the Father, but by through Christ. You see me? Christ are the gateway to eternal life. And that are the big secret. Because obviously enough people in the world just don't know. You know, so just share the good news 
read your Bible, find out more about Christ. You know, tell your friends about Christ, man, and help them enter eternity. Do you say? And so we have to be careful of the false prophets and teachers we are leading you away from truth with a whole heap of fancy belief system and ideology desire will connect to your own desire to be free and to understand yourself and understand creation will give you a tailor-made idea of God and you know ask the questions for yourself and you know test the spirit and you know prove it be very careful of those right and so you won't have to have a deathbed confession or in the last moments of your life seek to the Lord you'll be able to live the providence of God while you're still here and don't believe those who talk about God promise you a paradise after you die. Because if you don't live in a principle, you would have been living heaven and earth. So until the next time it's been Talaku, the great of oh, reasonings right here on the tree of life. Just looking at you know the conversion of Robert Nestor Marley, Bob Marley, that yeah, is repudiated, that it is reputed um, to um, Christianity, Orthodox Ethiopian Christianity. Right after um, yeah, being diagnosed with um, melanoma, right, it was cancer, right, skin cancer, and um, yeah, some said he was on his death bed. And it was during the time he was about to die, but I was thinking it was a time when he was severely ill, right, and um, he made that transition through Christ, and we're saying, God bless him soul for it. But you don't have to wait until such an extremely negative state of our fears to come to the Lord. Try the spirit and prove it. Me I right now, me are extra. Try the spirit. Yeah? So until next time. Love, like, share, subscribe to the Child Life Experience right here. And see that me. I support the Wizio mini therapy healing sessions. I just support one of the packages that I do on WhatsApp. I just come for one of the retreats. The information is in the description box if you want to support the Patreon. Well, you know, information in the description box, or you can support through the PayPal, or you can um, purchase some merchandise at Teespring. You know, we got blazers, t shirt caps, and um, yeah, support the Share Life Ministry business. So, in the presence of my co host, High Priest Tafara. Perfect, Perfect love. Perfect, Perfect love. Hi, hi.